It's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Let's talk about new truck launches. Why does it take so long? Dude, where's my truck, right? I see these on social media. I see it on Facebook groups. I see it on Twitter. I see it, I don't know where they look on Twitter very much, but uh, I see it on YouTube comments. People are going, why does it take so long to get a truck, right? I think today's society is saying, hey, you know, Apple can release a phone and I can walk into Ryzen the next week and buy it, right? So why does a truck take so long to get production? And why is it so delayed? Why did GM screw that up? Why did Ford screw that up? I see those videos all the time too. Like Ford really screwed up this launch. And boy, GM really screwed up the Chevy Colorado launch. And I don't know why they keep making those big mistakes. Well, that's not at all accurate at all. So in this video, let's talk about this. So I'm going to give you some background information and give you some ideas on how to calm down and realize what things actually happen and how the automotive industry actually works. So I grew up in Michigan. I was a... Um, a document this a few times. Um, so I grew up there and I'll tell you what, the entire state is built around the automotive industry and you get to know the automotive industry by being, well, living there because everything's affected by it. And my dad was part of General Motors. He did, used to do the plants and do the new truck launches. When new truck would get launched, you go to the plants and figure out how to build the darn thing, right? It sounds a little weird, but that's actually have teams that do that. And then being around all the engineers I've been in around the last 12 years, we're pretty good at understanding what happens. So what you have on a new vehicle being launched is you have this wave of people added to the team and going down. So at, it's kind of like this. So a uh, truck has been launched for a while, getting ready to do a new model, a new model version of it. They'll start building up team, building up team, building up team. They get a peak where they have a full team working on it. And then the team kind of drizzles out. They're not hiring and firing people. It's just that people get added to the team and then they back away from the team as trucks get to development. So for example, Say you're the chief engineer of the new Toyota Tacoma that comes out May 19th. We have all the details for that. And uh, say you're Sheldon Brown. Great guy. Uh, talked to him a couple of times over the last couple of years. Great guy. You're going to see a lot of him on this channel because he's just a good person to talk to. So he's sitting there as chief engineer. That means he, he has the final say on some things, but other things he doesn't. He's going to work with a team. They all have bosses. Whether, whatever chief engineer you're on, you have a boss somewhere, right? So he's got, you got powertrain guys and, and engine guys, transmission guys. He's got legal team. He's got a safety team. He's got product planning team that looks at what's happening in the marketplace currently, what buyers are wanting. He's got the uh, safety systems or like the proactive driving assist system. I did a video yesterday with Nick Sartarski, who's the head of that program. He has his whole thing going on. You have Culty Design. They design the vehicle. You have the presence of the companies. You have marketing. All this stuff happens. And so that, so you have people like Sheldon Brown who have to, it's not really just a, he's not like a chief engineer with a wrench walking around all day, tightening a bolt. He's one of those guys that's going to work with all these teams and he's got the plant teams too. The plant's got to be able to build it. So you have, what you what you come down to is, I'm going to go build a new, brand new truck. Say, for example, I'm Sheldon Brown. I'm going to go build a new Tacoma. I have a budget. I know how much a truck I can spend on. That's my research and development budget. I know who I got to hire. I know how much things are going to cost to get different people as part of the team. There's a budget, right? And then I have a percentage, a profit percentage I have to hit. So I can add, I can add shiny chrome wheels, but I got to remove something to add the shiny chrome wheels. Because if I don't, my price point gets too high, I'm not competitive. So I got to work with all these teams. And I got to work with legal team. Legal's got to be okay with it, which is for Toyota, they're a very conservative company. There's always a question mark with those legal teams. And you have uh, engineering, you have the new infotainment system. They have, won't have their say, right? So they're going to be, so you have people like, so for example, Sheldon's working with Nick Sertarski. Nick's going, hey, you got to have these sensors in the right parts of the bumper for my system to work. And so Sheldon's got to go to Culty Design and say, hey, we have to have these sensors in the right part for that to work. And then they take this bumper and he's got to go to manufacturing and say, okay, can you build the truck with this bumper on it without screwing up like the whole time? So, you know, they want to have a, a sequence of, they want to have a truck built on the line every minute, rolling up line every minute or so. So how do you get that done? How, how much time on line does it take? And so you have this guy, he's basically, I think of the chief engineers, it's kind of like a field general. He's kind of like, or maybe like a coach, a coach of a team, right? All this team working together and then the coach. And then this team's actually a good example. So let's say your football team. So you, you practice, practice, practice. You have the games. The season gets over. The team disperses, right? Go to any headquarters of an NFL team. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm at the Denver Broncos headquarters. There's thousands of people working here today. No, not really. If it's the off season, there's not that many people. Same deal happens on Votive is that last couple of years has been the off season for the Toyota Tacoma. And so they just started last year and maybe probably 16, 18 months ago, started building up the team to have this new kickoff of this new truck. And so as that team builds up, they look, they launch it and then they go away. And so you have these situations where 
Uh, people are like, well, you know, I saw the release and I see the news. Why isn't truck out, out yet? And what's going on? Well, understand that when they get all this stuff together, they're not quite done yet. They're not quite complete when they launch that truck, right? So let, 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 this make more sense in a minute. So let's go, let's look at Chevy Colorado. So Chevy Colorado was fully revealed on July 28th, 2022. Okay, that is the full reveal. We can see all the trim comparisons. Jill wrote the story. We can see a bunch of photos of different versions of the Chevy Colorado. Now, this image I said was courtesy of General Motors. I think a lot of times these images are CGI. That truck actually doesn't exist. That one right there, I don't think that truck actually existed. I think there was a computer program that put on screen what it will look like, not what it is looking like, right? And so that's July of 2022. Now, our first drive of this event, of this vehicle, was February of 2023. Seven months later, we got to drive it. And you're saying, well, my goodness, that's a long period of time. Wouldn't they reveal it and then you can buy it the next day like you can with an Apple phone, right? You can just go to you know, Apple releases theirs within a week. You can go to Verizon and get a new phone. Well, there's a lot of things that PR will want to launch images of this. Marketing wants to get people excited about this, right? And they want to be competitive. So they want to give you details early because they, they do want to beat the competition. You know, there's a reason why Toyota did a bunch of teaser images building up to the Tacoma because they also knew the GMC Canyon is being launched and the Ford Ranger is being launched. They want to get the question in people's mind. They don't want you to see the Ford Ranger going, well, I don't know what the Tacoma is going to be like, so I better just go buy this Ford Ranger. No, no, no. They want to plant the seed to get you to say, well, I'm going to wait till the Tacoma comes out, so what's going on with that? So it's, there's a lot going on in that. That happens in my business all the time. For example, Ford Ranger got revealed on Wednesday. Guess who was pumping up a new truck coming out? Ram. People kept coming in the comments saying, well, the Ram Dakota is coming out. You can see the Brazil version. You can see whatever the version. And what they do, Ram launched a TRX version it's called Lunar, and they launched a Rebel 1500 Lunar Edition. Right? There's a lot of gamemanship going on. So let's get back to this, though. Let's get back to the idea of saying that, okay, it, you got the full reveal of the truck in July. The first ones people were able to drive beyond just engineering on their, with their spy photos, that's where you get spy photos from, they take these engineering trucks around, was in February. They didn't start hitting the lots till end of March, 1st of April. And you're going, why did it take so long to get from the first drive, for example, to where you could actually get one from a dealer? Well, right here, boom. Field economy numbers. I did a story about field economy numbers being revealed in the worst than prior generation, which is not surprising. Something GM's done a few times now, but there is your answer. March 24th, 2023 is why it took so long. That, that's why those trucks are in holding base. People are like, my truck's done. My dealer says it's done. We can't get it. What the heck? GM really screwed that up. GM didn't screw that up. EPA screwed that up. And the EPA didn't screw it up because here's what's going on. Is the EPA is on their own timeline of getting stuff done. And that doesn't have to match with the manufacturer timeline is. They, they, these things don't equally, you know, whatever. In a lot of cases, you know, manufacturers like this, EPA is like this, right? So, um, but you can't sell a truck to a customer without getting official EPA numbers. It's a law. So they can't release the trucks until they get EPA numbers. But people are going, my goodness, my truck took so long to get here. GM really screwed this up. Well, I, other things are impacted here too. For example, I ordered a Chevy Silverado EV, the, the full EV truck, right? The dealer in Cheyenne calls me and says, hey, we need to come in and uh, finalize your order. And I was like, nope. And he's like, well, what do you mean? Nope. You order your truck. We got to get all details done. I said, you don't know the details because I don't know the details. And I would know the details before you know the details. And so I'm not coming in. I can place my order. An hour later, the sales manager emailed me. He goes, yeah, you're right. You don't need to come in. Because here's the thing. Just because we saw all the full trim get revealed in July, it didn't mean you could order the Colorado then. It didn't mean we knew the price. We didn't know the price. We had no idea what the price was. So people were going, my dealer took my order in August 10th and I have an order placed. No, you don't. You have a dealer who wants to sit on your cash. You wanted a hundred bucks of free interest, free money from you or whatever the deposit was you put down. The dealer is hoping to make a sale. He wants to take your money. He wants to take your order. He didn't really do anything. GM, GM doesn't always didn't take the order yet. They don't take the order until the building price is done. You put those orders in until it actually happens. And then you take months after that because... Again, you have the truck, that truck's like, for example, this truck from the, the press drive, this one right here, they had at that press launch, uh, like, I'm going to say like seven or eight trucks, maybe 10. And you're going, well, that's kind of cool. They just have 10, you know, that's probably all you need, whatever. 
No, 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 no. Chevrolet had 10 Colorados. Full stop. Full stop. They had 10. That's all I could get. Because what the plants do is they'll do initial run of some of these vehicles to just make sure they could build it. What tools do they need? Do they need to invent a new process? Is it a new special tool to add something to it? Do they change something up? How can you get these through the line? Again, a, a really uh, fast speed of, of still having quality, but keep the line flowing, right? So they build these throughout the lineup. And they'll build 10, 15, 20 of them, whatever, to make sure they can build them. They take those and they inspect those, make sure they're really good shape, make sure everything's done right. And then they ship them to marketing to do videos and photos. They ship them to public relations, to do first drive events. So they hadn't actually built those trucks really yet. And the trucks, that you, a lot of times I see at press events, have no VIN number. And the reason they have no VIN number is they're not official yet because they can't sell them because they don't EPA numbers. And then they just crush them when they're done because they cannot sell vehicles without a VIN number. So just because you saw it and you saw me driving around in it, doesn't mean you can get it. So let's talk about this. So looking at the Chef or Toyota Tundra, this is a big one back in the day. And still, I'm a little frustrated about one thing about this, but I'll tell you why. We had our first official look at the Toyota Tundra on June 18th of 2021. That's when we had the details come out. June. I ordered a truck in October 25th, 2021. This created a lot of confusion. Let me explain why. People are like, how'd you order a truck? My dealer's not even taking orders yet. That's common. I got quite a bit from that. Um, I didn't order a truck. I squaz I did. I went to public relations and said, I want this truck. This is kind of what I'm looking for. These details. They took it to their sales team in Toyota and they did some now looking around what's going to happen. And so I was talking with Toyota directly and saying, hey, you know, I want to get this truck. I want it for the channel. I need it by December 31st. If you know tax codes, you have to buy it by the end of the year and have it in my driveway per the tax code. And so there's a little bit of, I had a little bit of um, anxiety rush to get things done. And from Toyota's standpoint, they want me to have a truck, right? So look, there's no doubt that I have what, 94,000 subscribers on the channel. We get like a million views on, on pretty much most months. Like I have some platform, I have some voice, right? And Toyota wants me to have this truck because they want to get the first information out there. And I was just talking to a guy that night in the United Club who actually bought a Toyota Tundra after my videos. So th there's a huge thing in there, marketing. So I was able to have some exclusive access a little bit. That's way good way to say it. But what they did was a sales team figured out what I could get because they knew part supplies, they knew it was going to be built first. That was kind of my frustration with Toyota is that Toyota always does the hybrid version of a truck a vehicle after the gas version. And usually the hybrid version of the truck is the one you want. So Toyota Tundra TRD Pro, yeah, it was I was screwed. I couldn't buy that because it would not be available until the following year and I need it for tax purposes. So that was a lot of back and forth. I was trying to buy something I could actually have in my driveway because of the parts situations. So I didn't, I didn't order it. I just happened to get lucky with my job, my influence to be able to get that. So I took delivery, or excuse me, I took delivery by the end of the year, but here's the deal. We didn't drive the hybrid version of the Tundra until February of 2022. So that is five, six. So let's see, we saw it in June, right? So let's say, let's just make it easy. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Eight months later, we drive the hybrid version of that truck. And like it was like a month or two after this, you got them in deal lots. So I see people all the time saying, well, my goodness, I'm going to cancel my order and show GM or show Ford how much they screwed up that launch or how much they screwed up this or screwed up that. Well, that's not the whole story. The whole story is it just depends on when you think you ordered it, if you could have actually ordered it, and what's happening in part supplies and what's happening, things being built, where the EPA is on certifying the mileage, mile per gallon numbers. And then the fun kicker of all this kind of deal is can they actually – transport them from the factory to the dealer lots. If you remember, General Motors has made big news lately about developing their own fleet of transport companies because they're so tired of waiting on third-party transport companies to get these trucks to dealer lots. So what GM and everybody else does, and most plants most plants do this, is they have they build a plant by a rail heart. Oh, they have a little rail head in the, tramp, in the plant. So they have rail cars that sit outside the plant. They drive cars and the rail car. The train comes up, picks them up, Take some more to other railheads, like in say in Denver, Chicago, uh, LA, Atlanta, and then you have these third-party transport companies that come in, and they're the guys you see with the with the, du du the double-decker cars and stuff. They'll pick them up, take them to dealers in the area. But that system is all based on logistics. So, does the railroad at that time are they prioritizing coal, 
production shipping or the, are the prioritary priori, or they make it a priority over out of I can't talk today priority over freight. So that happens. Then you also have whether or not the transport companies can have enough people to deliver these vehicles. COVID disrupted a lot of the, that industry. And so you don't have as many transport companies used to. They're building back up. You have all these, all these factors involved going on. So I think the reality of things is, is that we're so used to having this Amazon uh, thought process, this Apple thought process, this idea that we can just go buy it today and Amazon delivers in two days. It's actually pretty amazing. And we want to say the same thing for a vehicle. And that's just not the case. And so keep in mind that, you know, production and development of vehicle takes a long period of time. It's not, they're not all the time people work on these vehicles. They ramp up, they ramp down, they go to the plants, the plants can actually build it, EPA certifies it. That all takes months and months. I was talking to Nick about this over drinks the other night and he goes, have you ever worked with the government? They're on their own time frame, And that's very much true. So that's going to happen. And so you have all this stuff going on, all these factors involved. They take a while to get the truck. And I think it's always so funny because after these trucks are taking dealer lots, you can go check them out at dealers. You can go walk around and they're actually out there. All this noise about, boy, GM screwed up that launch or Ford screwed up that launch, whatever, goes away. It's funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah. So what I'm saying is if you're one of the first people to want to buy a truck and you're excited about buying that truck and you'd be like, dude, where's my truck? Just relax. Take your time. I have two orders on trucks. I want to buy a third truck. And, uh, well, and I have a third part truck in my, my process every year I want to buy a truck. And I probably won't be able to buy a truck I want this year because it may not be out this year. I may have to wait for next year, which means i got to buy something else. So I have the same problem you guys have, except sometimes I get lucky and know somebody. Hey, for more, check the videos over here. Website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.